Britain's Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip at a remembrance ceremony this morning in London to mark the 100th anniversary of the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. His death was the spark that ignited World War I. Yesterday in Sarajevo, Bosnian Serbs unveiled a monument commemorating Gavrilo Princip, the man who shot and killed the Archduke and his wife, changing the course of history in a single violent stroke. The assassination ushered in decades of war and political upheaval throughout Europe and across the globe. But what you might not know is the story of how it happened and why a seemingly isolated act could set off a four-year war with a staggering cost. For a closer look at this turning point in human events, we are joined by Dan Carlin, host of the popular Hardcore History podcast. Dan, good morning. Thanks for having me. This is a really fascinating assassination in that it was almost, it was the second attempt of the day and it was at point blank range. What happened? I always think it reminds me a lot of the John F. Kennedy assassination. Here you have a world leader in an open topped car going down the street, the public on both sides of the street, and his wife next to him killed by a gunman. But you'd have to imagine that John F. Kennedy had been shot at earlier in the day, that they survived, they whisked the car off, saved his life and another gunman got him later in the day. Mm -hmm. I mean, the circumstances that, that led up to Franz Ferdinand's death are strange. It's considered to be one of the great coincidences of all time. Why was it so com such a combustible situation, that assassination and everything it triggered? Forty years before the war broke out, the German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck had said that Europe was already a powder keg. And he described the leaders as being like men smoking in an arsenal. And he said, I can't tell you when it's going to break out, but he said, I can tell you where it's going to break out. He says, it's going to be some damn fool event in the Balkans that'll do it. So Europe was like a bunch of gasoline-soaked wood anyway, just waiting for something to happen. Because really, after this assassination, within one week, all of those alliances had essentially restructured, right? Well, and that was part of the problem, is that all of a sudden a dynamic got started that didn't really allow people a lot of time to do anything about it. I always compare it to someone pulling the pin on a hand grenade and everybody's trying to defuse the hand grenade while it's about to go off and everything's ticking you know you think today if you'd only had a little bit more time for the diplomats to get to work right. or cooler heads to prevail you know things might have been different and when you think about how you know the German military leader at the time was a guy named von Moltke and he said this conflict we're about to get into will decide the history of the planet for the next hundred years and here we are today a hundred years later yeah and and this was it ended up being a truly transformative event didn't it in terms of war and the way war was seen and the way war was practiced if you look at the people going off to war in 1914 they look in some cases like they came out of a painting from napoleon's time yeah. the last time europe had been in a general war was 99 years before this time period at waterloo four years later we have poison gas heavy bombers bombing cities submarines machine guns, artillery, tanks. I mean, the transformation in a mere four years is like, is like technology on steroids. When you look at this historically then, what lessons do you think that we can learn from what happened all the way back 1914. I think lessons you have to be careful because there's so many variables, but certainly once you push the go button on war, it's so hard to decide after you've done that that maybe you want to back up and, you know, like we said, pull the pin and put, put the pin back in the grenade. Also, I think there's this attitude a little bit that, um, that, that you know, the terrorist attack caused all this. Really, you could almost make a case that it was the response to the terrorist right. attack that led to everything that happened afterwards. I mean, this could have been a regional war. And the scale of loss in the war was just staggering. No World War II without it, no communism without it, no modern Middle East without it. Amazing. 100 years ago today. Dan Carlin, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.